Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, here's David and Susan out in the woods. We have our big lodged hickory tree. It's about a between 10 and 12 inch diameter hickory. It's jammed up on top of a mocker nut hickory close and out on the other end about a six or eight inch shag bark hickory. It's really tangled. And uh, we kind of kicked around how to do this and we've had a few comments. Somebody uh, uh, <laughs> you, somebody has said in the past, and several people have said in the past, I don't have a tractor. And so I decided we're going to see if we can do this without a tractor. Uh, I could, the tractor is easy to use, but a lot of people don't have it. Anyway, we've got a come along here, and we're going to make this thing come down with a come along. Uh, typically, when I do these, when I do a lodge tree like this, uh, Typically what I do is cut vertically until I see the turf begin to close and then put a wedge in and continue cutting as I go out the bottom this part up here breaks loose and it spears into the ground. Uh, you know I'm, I've done that enough I'm, I'm very comfortable doing it. You want to be on the side that it's not going to come at you. Uh, on this tree we have Roll up there and look at that mocker nut. On that, that mocker nut is wanting to push that tree away from where I'm standing right now. So if I did that method, I'd stand over here on this side. It's got some spring action there. Uh, another way you can cut things like this uh, is you can make a face cut up here on top, make an open face, bore through and make a hinge right here, and then cut out the bottom and that tree will settle down if this part is thin enough to let it go. Uh, we, you know, the, the question there is, will this let it, allow it to fold? And if you have a tractor, again, that's not a problem because you can come up there with a loader and push down on this to bring it on down. Uh, again, that's require, that might require a tractor, and I don't want to stick my saw in here and work on that because it busts loose and I get my sm saw smashed. And smashing your saw is not as bad as hurting yourself, but you still don't want to do it. So anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to do a new thing I've never put on uh, a video before. You can cut a tongue and groove or a key in something like this. We use a key, if you're logging on steep ground, you've got a log on the ground with a top on it. You want the log cut loose from the top, but you don't want the log to roll downhill. Uh, what you can do is you make a cut on top, cut on the bottom, a bore cut here, a bore cut there to make a tongue on the end of this log and then a cut back here and then this will pull off of that stump or if you're doing a treetop you know you could pull it off a treetop so what we're going to do we're going to build a tongue and groove here and I've got it to come along already set on the other side and uh, we're going to We'll make our, our tongue and groove key here, and then we're going to pull it apart with a come along. And that's something that almost anybody could do if they've got a chainsaw and, and a come along. So we're going to fire up and give that a go.
in there. <laughs> okay, there's the top. We got our saw pinch. I can put a wedge in here, push that up, and get that saw pinch out of there. Be right back of the wedge. There we got her. Okay. Okay, are we ready? Okay. Now, if you look at the tree now, we've got uh, tongue sticking out the bottom of the log and a groove in the stump. And when I got that loose, that, that tree slid right back and pinched my saw. We put a wedge in there, got the saw loose, no problem. And we've got a come along set here to another tree. And all I've got to do now is uh, pull on the come along. And that should pop out and then we'll We'll see when it comes down, if it comes all the way down. It'd be nice if it did. We're not really ex that hopeful. So anyway, I'm gonna start pulling. Do we have a spot there we didn't cut free? Yeah, on the top of that. Uh, we need to cut down just a touch. Let me hit that. Yeah, right over here. Okay, give it another pull here, see if it can go. That baby is tight. Oh boy. Putting a pretty good pull. I can see it looks like it's moved a little bit. Let me tap on it and see if vibration will make it move. That doesn't come real easy. Pretty quick, and it keeps me from tracking. Whoa! There we go. <laughs> well, that made me land on my butt. <laughs> I'm glad it came down. I was bending the handle on my come along. Okay. Now we're back to doing the vertical cuts to make her come down. That was fun. Let me pick up my chain so we don't use that in the leaves. Okay, what I want everybody to notice here is the distance between the stump and this. This is that distance is all due to the side pressure on that log from that hickory. Because as soon as it moved, the tension from that uh, come along was gone. That was chain and cable that doesn't stretch. And so that, that disappeared as soon as this moved. That hickory is what pushed it out. That is why you saw me working from this side. I didn't trust this thing at all. I thought, you know, if I work from this side and that side pressure cut it, you know, pushed it through, that would kill you. That would hit you right, right in the torso right here it would have killed you. So that's why we worked from the other side to be away from that bind. And now that it's on the ground, uh, you see it's still hung up, uh, being dragged, by, being held up by two trees. And we're going to go ahead and do a couple of our vertical cuts, just in case somebody hasn't seen that. Uh, we do a cut part way until it starts to close, put in a wedge, cut on through the bottom, and then the upper part will chunk down and stab into the ground. And we'll do two or three of those. 
and uh, you get down to where it's almost vertical what you're going to have to do then is put a rope or a chain on that and you're going to have to pull it out with a four-wheel drive or a tractor because once that gets vertical it becomes a hazard so okay so we're going to fire up and do that you can move in here and watch that and it's safe from pretty much safe from either side now that that tree is still going to push it that way a little bit so if he stands right over there it'll be good something worth talking about. <laughs> okay, when I made this cut, rather than... Rather 
Now when I made this last cut here, when I saw it start to close, rather than stick a wedge in the top, I thought, well, I'm just going to come up from underneath that thing. This is the last cut I'm going to make. And it got me pinched. <laughs> so that's a good lesson. When you're using that wedge, you keep from pinching your saw. We've had a lot of comments about, you know, make your cut on top, come up from underneath. Well, if there's any pressure backward on that, when you make that second cut from underneath, that top comes right down, grabs your saw. So I love my wedges. <laughs> anyway, I had a big enough curve there, I was able to drive a wedge in on the bottom and make it come down. Isn't that pretty to have that down? No, that's really great. Appreciate you all commenting. We'll put this in uh, tonight and uh, you can see how we survived it without getting hurt. Thank you, Susan, for being a very fine camera person. Really appreciate your help. And we'll see you all later. Thank you.